Hi everyone, I'm Marto and I answer your Egyptology questions. And someone recently asked me about Anubis and whether he's the god of death. This will disappoint many of you, but the ancient Egyptians had no god of death. That's a very common misconception. Uh, Anubis was not the god of death, in fact, neither was Osiris. Anubis was many things, but god of death, not one of them. The ancient Egyptians didn't have gods of thing, um, of many things that you would have thought they had uh, comparing with other religions and mythologies and things like that, but they didn't actually. I mean, heck, they didn't even have a god of the Nile. And, you know, ancient Egyptian civilization is essentially synonymous with the Nile. Um, there's the god Hapi, um, who is actually, strictly speaking, the god of the inundation. Because the Nile used to flood uh, annually, um, and that's what, you know, renewed the soil, and that's why Egypt was such a fertile place, and that's what was the breadbasket of the Mediterranean. Um, in some context, this god Hapi was sometimes, like, you know, according to context, it seems like he was more identified with the Nile itself, actually. But still, strictly speaking, more often than not, he's the god of the inundation of the annual flood and not of the Nile itself. Um, similarly, the ancient Egyptians didn't have a god of death. Um, Anubis was, well, many things. Um, one of his primary associations was he was the god of mummification. In fact, uh, according to ancient Egyptian mythology, he, was, he performed the very first mummification. He made the very first mummy, and that was none other than Osiris. Um, there's this entire cycle of stories surrounding Osiris. Many of you will have heard of it. Um, it's such a big topic that I'll leave that for a separate video sometime. But, long story short, Osiris was the king of Egypt way back in mythological times. So long ago, it's mythology. Of course, uh, this is what the ancient Egyptians believed. There is no actual evidence where they're having, ever having been a king Osiris. But in any case, so Osiris, uh, as the story goes, was king of Egypt until his envious brother, Seth, killed him. Osiris's body, depending on various versions of the myth, but long story short, what is consistent is that his body was cut up into pieces. And for him to have a successful afterlife, he had to be reassembled. And Anubis basically did just that. He, um, Isis, um, Osiris's wife, having found all the pieces, Anubis mummified Osiris, assembled the pieces together, made him whole again. That way, Osiris went from being the king of Egypt, the king of the living, to being the king of the dead, the lord of the underworld. Um, so, Anubis was the god of mummification. The ancient Egyptians used to, upon death, identify themselves with Osiris. And because, you know, it's like a legal precedent, right? I mean, if it worked for Osiris, he was mummified, he was made whole again, and he did achieve an afterlife. Therefore, if I do the same thing, I should expect the same result. Um, so, you know, um, Anubis came to be associated with mummification, and you, it's someone um, that you want to be on... Um, on it, it's someone on whose good side you want to be um, in, in order to achieve the afterlife. Another thing Anubis is associated with is generally also, you know, the clue lies in how he's depicted which is to say, as a canine deity. Um, he's often called a jackal god, though I recently found out that biologists have classified the animal um, that you know the ancient Egyptians associated Anubis with, um, that they saw the most um, aptly representative of the powers that Anubis represented to them. This animal is now classified by biologists as... Um, a wolf. So strictly speaking, it's a wolf, but really it's vernacularly speaking um, until recently before, you know, classifications and DNA studies and things like that. It, it's, a, it's a jackal and the term sort of just stuck. So Egyptologists continue to call it a jackal. But anyway, what do canines do? They guard, they protect, they're our buddies. Um, so that's another big aspect of the god Anubis. He 
protects the dead. So even though Anubis is not a god of death, he's, again, very much associated with death. He's a funerary deity, right? Um, so, you know, he's the god of mummification. He's also the one who guards the dead. The guard, who, he guards the body, he guards the tomb, he guards the cemetery. Um, there's also this very interesting fact I learned about um, a certain behavior um, natural to jackals. Um, I've never found any confirmation for this uh, in like a in like a proper academic paper or something. Um, so if anyone knows anything about this, please uh, let me know. I'd love to read up more about this, but it's fascinating. In any case, what I, what, what 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 this is is that jackals fear or are repulsed by their own dead. Um, so what the ancient, the ancient Egyptians, having observed this behavior, they um, would put jackal hides hanging, and you see this often in representations, hanging on doorposts of the doorway into uh, the cemetery. Um, because, you know, you want to keep jackals out, because, you know, jackals will um, go looking for food in there. So to guard the bodies of the deceased, you want to be um, repelling them. And the best way to do that is to actually, well, hang up jackal hides um, from doorposts. Insert Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde joke here. Um, so this also came to be a very... Um, th this dovetails very nicely with the idea that jackals are therefore also the protectors of the cemetery. Because it wasn't just, you know... Um, um, jackals that are out to um, harm um, burials, but many other animals and um, tomb robbers. So, you know, there are a lot more dangers. So the ancient Egyptians having observed that, you know, jackals in that manner as hides are protective of the cemetery, well, there, therefore Anubis is the guardian of the cemetery. Um, on another level, of course, I mean... Being a canine, um, gu dogs guard. It's what they do. They're very protective. Um, so, you know, it, that again dovetails very nicely in a completely different way with what uh, Anubis meant to the ancient Egyptians. What dogs mean to us even until today. They're our friends. They, they guard us. They protect us. They're loyal. Um, so it's really fascinating, and in fact, uh, uh, there are very, very interesting parallels of this kind of thing. I mean, you, you're probably wondering, well, there's this animal that wants to harm the dead. Why would uh, the ancient Egyptians appeal to it then? Well, there's an exact parallel, like many parallels like this. I mean, look at uh, Sehmet, uh, the lion, the fierce lioness goddess, whose very name means the powerful one. Um, she's, among many other things, she's associated with, you know, um, diseases, epidemics, and she would send out her demons every, uh, I think it was, in, yeah, in the summer. Um, apparently it was a time for, ripe for disease at the time, and she would send out her agents, basically, to get people, and people would pray to her as a result to keep them at bay, since she's the one in control of them. By appealing to her, you're also keeping her away. Therefore, she's also the protector against disease, as well as being the inflictor of it. Exact same thing, Serket, the goddess of scorpions. Um, she is in charge of scorpions, so she can inflict punishment on people, but she's the one you pray to to keep them away, because she's in charge of them. The exact same thing goes with this. Anubis being, you know, the jackal god, he's in charge of the very jackals that both protect and guard the cemetery, but also the ones that wish the burials harm. So it protects the cemetery that way. Fascinating. Um, Anubis is also associated with um, probably actually one of his most common uh, and most famous roles is his role in the judgment of the dead. Now, he's not the judge himself, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So there's the funerary book, um, famously called the Book of the Dead. It's probably the most famous um, ancient Egyptian 
funerary book. The ancient Egyptians themselves, little known fact, called it the book of going forth by day. Um, many copies of it exist. One of the best known is Ani, and that's uh, it's in the British Museum. You have to go see it. It's beautiful. So one of the key scenes in there is the one that pertains to the Book of the Dead spell 125. So after you die, um, you go through a whole series of perils, a long perilous journey to get to the Hall of Judgment. And um, this Book of Dead spell, number 125, is taking place in that hall. You're there, there are 42 judges, and you're standing in the presence of the king of the netherworld, the judge, Osiris. And before him is a set of scales. On one end, you place your own heart. On the other, you've got the feather of Maat. Uh, if your heart is heavier, you are, you're found guilty, essentially. But if it's the same, you achieve what is the equivalent of going to heaven. But what does that mean exactly? To the ancient Egyptians, um, the heart was the seat of the intellect, emotions, personality, uh, everything. Your soul resided in your heart. Um, the ancient Egyptians didn't know the part the brain played in all this. Um, and, you know, it's very poetic, right? The heart, um, you feel your emotions there, in a manner of speaking. Um, it's also in the center of your body. So, you know, it's very apt. So anyway, so you're weighing the heart, you're weighing the heart against this feather. Well, obviously you'll say, like, the, the heart's heavier, right? Well, this isn't meant to be taken literally. Because the feather isn't actually a feather. It's, um, just as the heart isn't really a heart, the heart symbolizes who you are. Are you a good person or not? Um, your deeds. Um, similarly, the feather symbolizes, is the symbol of Maat. This concept, also a goddess by the name of Maat, this concept basically to the ancient Egyptians means what is right. And that means um, truth, order, justice, um, feeding the hungry, quenching the thirst of the thirsty, clothing the naked, things like that, helping others. That's living by Maat, among, among many other things. Um, so if you lived by Maat, your heart will weigh the same as the feather, because you know, you live by it. But if your heart's heavy, heavy with wrongdoing and guilt, then it's fed to Amit, the devourer, de thus denying you of an afterlife. And as the and um, Anubis is often depicted um, handling the scales. It's one of his uh, most iconic roles, and you see that like it beautifully depicted on the papyrus of Ani. So there you have it. These are three of the primary roles of the god Anubis. Of course, there are still many more associations, but I would say these are the top three. He is the god of mummification. He is uh, the guardian for all the reasons that I explained. And also, he's, the, he's right there, you know, working the scales while your heart is being weighed after you die. Um, so yeah, many roles, but n not a god of death. And remember how I said the ancient Egyptians didn't have a god of death? I lied. There was one. But interestingly, there's only one attestation of this god. Just once. In over 3,000 years, 3,500 years, maybe even more, of ancient Egyptian history, ancient Egyptian culture, civilization, only once, around 1,000 BC, 21st dynasty, um, this figure appear, appears on the funerary papyrus of the Chantress Henut Tawi. This is also in the British Museum. A uh, fascinating papyrus. You've got all sorts of uh, very interesting depictions on there. But the one that's... Uh, relevant to us now is this serpent with four human legs, a human head, bearded, and a tail um, that's in the shape of a jackal head, that terminates in a jackal head or a canine. And 
um, this serpent has two wings, and between the two wings, a sun disk. And here's the interesting thing. It's the caption that goes along with this fantastic figure. The ancient Egyptians often had, you know, these captions identifying the figure. You know, the, if you're in the tomb of um, so-and-so, I don't know, let's call him Nacht. If you're in the tomb of Nacht, it'll say, you know, his titles, his name, so you know which figure is which. And um, similarly in temples, you know, the god Amun, uh, the lord of the thrones of the two lands, yada, 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 king so-and-so. Similarly, this figure has a caption. And it's fascinating. It reads, Death, the great god who made the gods and humankind. Wow. Sends chills, doesn't it? Um, nowhere else is this attested. Not in the 2000 years before this point when ancient Egyptian civilization um, per se started and not for until the very end. It doesn't, just doesn't appear again. Um, the great god, don't let that fool you. I, I know it sounds very grand and it is. But it certainly isn't unique. This epithet was applied to many deities, um, sometimes even relatively minor ones, uh, depending on context. Context is everything. Um, so this deity is called the Great God. Not unique, but still not to be taken lightly, but also to be called the one who made the gods and humankind. It's fascinating. And why does this figure not appear again or before this ever let me remind you as we egyptologists always say and archaeologists always say absence of evidence is not evidence of absence right just because there are no other depictions of this figure of this deity um doesn't mean that they never existed that they don't exist what it simply means is that if there were any, they just haven't survived, or we haven't found them yet, and that's all. But still, um, you could maybe you could probably say that it's probably rare. Um, although even that, like I'm going out on a limb to say that because this kind of figure I would expect to find on papyri, and papyri, you know, being organic and not you know carved on temple walls of stone, is likelier to um, degrade over time than that. So. Who knows? Who knows? So there you have it. So the ancient Egyptians did have a god of death. It was just, um, it seems likely that he wasn't very common. And there's certainly only one known instance of this deity. So anyway, um, today is International Dog Day. Um, and the god Anubis reminds us that uh, dogs have been our best friends for as long as we've been around.